Hello and welcome. I'm today in the land of Austria and I'm very honored to be able to sit here with a great artist whose first language we can say is music. He is the Grammy nominee for the best Latin jazz album and his name is Juan Garcia Herreros and I would like to welcome you here Juan. Hello, Andrea, how are you? Hello, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm really happy that I'm sitting today with you, actually at your home. Me too. And um, let's talk about music today. And That's what I love to talk about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I knew so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, your, your stage name actually is Snow Owl. Yes. And Snow Owl, I checked, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a North American bird. Yes. And uh, it has some Arctic origins. Yeah. And uh, for these birds, it's known that they have keen eyesight and also very good hearing. And yes. symbolically, yes. they represent an ancient wisdom keeper. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, uh, I don't know, I want to ask you, mm -hmm. how is this connected with you and your music? Um, the, the snow owl is always able to see in the darkest places of, of, uh, of the world or of the soul. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's uh, many moments and many characteristics of this uh, snow owl, which this name was given to me in my Indian tribe. And there's many moments in my life where I have been able to use that quality, and also with my music. And uh, I feel that music has that power to bring a person out of the darkness. That's a beautiful way now. Now we will love snow owls even more. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But otherwise you are coming from Colombia. Yes. And um, I don't know, your first musical studies began with a flute when mm -hmm. you were nine years mm -hmm. old. And when you moved actually to New York City with your family. Yes. Um, tell us, was this your own choice, the flute and the music, or who discovered who? I, I'd like to say this in, in every interview because it's very important for me to say that uh, the first rhythm that we ever hear, or the first, the first uh, frequency, is is the heart of your mother when you're inside of the womb, and it's a very deep frequency, and it has a rhythm depending on the emotion. And I think we're born in music already. So, as as a choice, music was never a choice for me. Um, being a, an agent of the universe, of the Creator, I am just fulfilling my part. So it was never a choice. I knew that from the first uh, conscious moments that I had in my life that I was here to make music. Um, the flute was the first instrument, um, which was the only instrument which was available for me to study for free. So I grabbed the first one that I could. And, but all the time I was uh, studying by myself piano and then later I started with electric bass. Mm. Mm. Now you answered already on, on my question, is the musician born or it is made? And uh, I see for, for, for me, some... For me, they, they are born. They are born. They are born. And um, actually when you moved to Florida, you discovered electric bus. Yes. Uh, my, uh, what is it that attracted you in, in this bus the most? My, <laughs> my brother uh, was learning drums. And he said, uh, a drummer needs a bass player. And I said, no, not bass. It's so boring. <laughs> that was my first reaction, you know. I didn't, I didn't really know enough about it. But uh, I started to play bass. He forced me into it. And, and in the end, I ended up... Uh, I'm very happy he did that because it changed my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I realized that it doesn't matter if it's bass, piccolo. It doesn't matter if it's a... Uh, how do you say? A triangle. It, it, if, if you look at the instrument as a tool, then you can challenge the limits of that instrument and be every other instrument with it. So you can be a bass player if you want, but I don't feel like I'm a bass player, I'm a musician. Mm. So I can be the melody or I can be the bass or I can be the rhythm or the chords, anything. So if your limit is your strength. But you prefer ba ba bass? I prefer music. You prefer music? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, some people would consider you lucky because you discovered your passion so early in your life mm -hmm. and uh, other people are still searching for what is it that drives them most. 
It was, what is it? Uh, is it a chance or a choice? It's, I, I didn't discover it. Mm. I, I was very consciously aware that music is why I'm here on this planet. It was not a choice, it was not a discovery. It was just a, a very clear message from the universe that I have to do this. And you're doing it greatly. Thank you. Um, but still, you had to pursue your passion mm -hmm. and learn some things on the way. What would you say was your biggest lesson um, through pursuing your passion? Mm, the biggest lesson in, in music and, and I think in any, in any career that you choose is the beauty of patience because you never learn everything. Mm. The biggest lesson is patience because the moment you say, I know everything, you're finished. It's over. Move on to something else. And I've found that, that in, through music, um, you will discover every day new notes, new chords, new people, new countries, new traditions. It's all the time something new to learn and experience. So the lesson for me is patience. We have the same lessons. <laughs> <laughs> okay, from, from self-thought musician actually, mm -hmm. to Grammy nominee, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and for best Latin jazz album, which is a big thing, yes. I guess. Yes, it, was the uh, first, yeah. it was the first time that an electric bass player was received this nomination. And that had never happened before in the history of the Grammys. So that was a, a big honor. Uh, we can say you write a new history from <laughs> from your work. How do you feel now after I'm, this? I'm 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 honored mm -hmm. from the nomination. Mm -hmm. I'm 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 overwhelmed that my name is next to Chick Corea and Paquito de Rivera and all these wonderful. It's it's overwhelming, but it also showed me it showed me my potential. Uh, and music for me is not a competition. Uh, if if I'm nominated, it's a great thing. I'm grateful for all the members of the academy and all the musicians that have supported me all my life um, but at the end of the day it's just a, it's just a prize mm -hmm. and this prize cannot heal people only you can so that for me will always be the goal and the motivation mm. I like it <laughs> <laughs> um, but not only you know not only this award you received many more awards already in yes. your life, in between, and some great awards. The best award I've ever received is love. Wow! <laughs> Any of the other awards is kind of, for me, useless. Okay, so uh, <laughs> can you tell us the secret behind your success? <laughs> love. Love. <laughs> love. When you give love, you receive love. Or... Love, patience, and understanding. Mm. Understanding. That's a big one. Because you have to have this empathy and, and, and relate to other people's, you know, backgrounds and, and life experiences. Uh, so if you, if you try to understand and try to be as understanding, if you have love with patience and open heart, which is understanding, then anything in life should not really be that, that complicated. It should just be a journey and a lesson. So is this reflecting on your private life too, like in how you are in your life, how you are doing, how you are working? There is no separation between the artist and my private life, mm. because this is my life. And if there would be any kind of schizophrenia, you know, of, of that it would be mm. two different people, it wouldn't be real. Mm. When you're playing your six-string electric bass, yeah. and this is your... Uh, yes. Invention, isn't it? Correct. Uh, you, Anthony you... Jackson. Anthony yeah. Jackson uh, invented the first contra bass guitar. Okay, yeah. And uh, there's very few people that are playing it. This yeah. huge <laughs> six string <laughs> monster. Um, but uh, it's discovering me and I'm discovering it. How do you feel when you're playing bass? Once again, I don't feel like I'm a bass player, yeah. I'm a musician who is a part of a ever-evolving, revolving energy between me and the musicians on the stage. So how I'm feeling, the first thing 
is I have to do my part. What the music is asking of me in that moment, that's what I do. But I'm also doing what the musicians are asking of me, what is required of me, so that they feel comfortable. So what am I feeling? It's I'm feeling people, I'm feeling the audience, I'm feeling the connection between the universe and the moment, the, the now. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a lot to feel. And if you, I'm really glad you mentioned what am I feeling because I'm not thinking. There's no time to think. Any thought during the creative process would be a separation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, no, you mentioned already some of the qualities of the musician, but still, I want to ask you, what do you think are main qualities for the great musician? You know? mm -hmm. I remember uh, I, some very humbling lessons that I experienced in, in working with musicians from Africa. And for example, uh, n no musician in Africa is, is great. And so these titles where you're saying something is better than something or this thing, you know, this is great and this is bad and this is this that I think the people who are who are able to eliminate those prejudices and those limits of fear are what we see maybe as great, but they don't see themselves like that. They they know, they understand that the fleet, I say, the duty, mm. the duty must be done. And that they're going to do this whether there would be a thousand people, 200,000 people watching or not. It's the same. How many hours does a musician or how many hours does any student of life spend working on something before they even show it? There was no audience when I was first practicing. I did it because I, I, that's who I am. So whether there's people or not, I'm gonna do what I'm doing. So love is again for me the the key and and the self confidence. Self confidence. Okay. And for you, um, they say that you can play whether the musical genre is jazz or it's pop or it's funk, mm -hmm. salsa. Um, that you can just play it mm -hmm. and go with the rhythm mm -hmm. and you're, I don't know, capable of performing with really great artistic, com without actually, yes, artistic without. compromise. Yes. Um, what is the secret of this versatility? That there's the element of understanding, there's the element of saying, if, I'm, if, if my tool is a bass, there's a history of bass uh, that, that needs to be learned and understood. And if you respect your tradition, you respect uh, your role, then um, you should learn its history. Mm. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, a, a philosophy student would not go to a discussion or to a seminar to talk about philosophy unless he knows of the other philosophies. It, it's, a, it's a question of learn as much as you can, then forget it all, and then present your interpretation of it and give your your torch to the next people that's it it's just a duty mm. we should use this more in uh, everyday life i guess between the absolutely. not only the music but the music is the element i guess the, yes, element now not that the way the way uh, child, the way children should be raised the way we we talk to each other the way we treat each other this should be implemented into into the whole world and, um, you know, I recently read an article mm -hmm. uh, where it was said that jazz was not meant for the dinner table, but it was, um, it is something with a heritage. Yes. And um, how do you feel jazz? Mm -hmm. And I don't know, what is your actually favorite rhythm? <laughs> <laughs> um, this, this, uh, this concept that, that jazz became some kind of you know, dinner table music or elevator music, uh, there's many reasons why that happened. Um, Many people don't realize that this was a dance music. 
and if somebody feels the music and they want to move, then they should be able to. I never understood, it was very hard for me in Europe to to see uh, these amazing classical concerts with huge orchestras and choirs, and but everybody's sitting there and they're not moving. That was very difficult for me. And what is my what is my favorite rhythm? That that is that is the rhythm. My favorite rhythm is the rhythm of my heart. That's what keeps me alive. That's <laughs> what <laughs> so keeps me going. Okay. <laughs> cool. <Yeah. laughs> You're now living in Austria and working a lot in Vienna. What uh, would you say, how does the city where you live affect your music mm -hmm. and creative process? If, if you're a, um, a regional musician, of course it affects your everyday life uh, because you're limited to the styles that are being performed mm. in the city and also the mentality of the city. But um, I'm, I'm traveling extensively so it's hard to say that I'm, that I'm really just based in one place. Uh, but yes, if, you were, if you're somebody who is more regional, this will affect you a lot. Mm. So if you maybe compare like Vienna and New York City when you lived, mm -hmm. what are the differences and the environment for the musician like you? Well, uh, for, for the, it depends on, on, on what you're looking for. Um, my, my philosophy to, to bring this, this this music of Latin jazz to Europe and, and, and to, to try to to try to make this music not just with the, the typical uh, musicians from from the South America, Caribbean, New York City. I, I really wanted to find that there must be places where other musicians are existing. So I like that uh, New York is this is this you know massive monster where many people are coming and fighting every day to survive. It's very difficult. And but the scenes are not. You know, they're not so different uh, because we're all so extremely connected now with internet and all this digital age and everything that in, in reality, the music scene for me now is, is all, it's on the internet. Mm -hmm. Because you, if I, if I want to see concerts in Japan, I just have to log on and I can sit there and watch them. Of course, I don't have the feeling of the live energy, I'm not there, but in a way I am there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so... There's, I don't see much difference anymore. I see everything actually extremely flooded. I see everything extremely overconnected. <laughs> yeah, we're going in a global civilization. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, and uh, you were also in Slovenia. Mm -hmm. Actually, we met this way. In the, <laughs> you were performing in Dance Forum Celje. Yes. And um, in your concert, I really heard this joy mm -hmm. in music. That for me was really uh, capturing, like, um, I felt such a beautiful energy behind your music. Thank you. Or going through the music. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, how do you transmit this joy to mm -hmm. the public? What um, would you say about it? By acknowledging the public. Mm -hmm. There's too many musicians that, uh, in my opinion, are going on stage and they, have, they are not including the fact that there's people watching them. And they're also not, they're performing uh, a, a kind of music which is showing more their conflict inside and their frustration inside as people. And then they kind of just lay that on, on people who are there who to be entertained, to exchange energy. And uh, a musician has a, has a huge responsibility to understand that, you know, a mother or a, or a father has to organize maybe a babysitter to get to that concert or they have to drive some maybe one hour or two hours or maybe somebody who is unemployed has to has to pay for that ticket like these are all situations that that musicians are not kind of respecting the humanity of what the audience is so my my feeling was was always if somebody takes the time to come and see me not they're not just gonna see a show they're not just gonna oh nice some of them no they're, they're gonna take a part of me with them home they're gonna take that joy the joy that they came I want to show them the reason why they came mm -hmm. that's it that's why it comes through 
do you have uh, I had a feeling that you had the same joy when playing not only with the public but also with the musicians on the absolutely. stage yes and you were like talking music absolutely absolutely <laughs> and is this always how it happens it has to yeah. be that way it, I'm not on the stage alone <laughs> and if it's a solo concert yeah. you know then it's different you know <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I have to communicate with, with, with my musicians and, and there's musicians on that stage that have performed with me over 15 years so we know each other so well there's so much trust and uh, yes we get that feedback a lot and, and the reason is is we trust each other we believe in each other and whatever weakness one person has the other has the strength to carry them so it's one thing it's not just you know a leader and the, no it's mm -hmm. really a band mm. um, we could transmit this to the you know I think the community would need more understanding on music how it works to be in a band mm -hmm. to actually be able to live together correct, and correct. Be together there's a huge difference between a boss and a leader mm -hmm. you know the boss is just ordering around and doing that the leader is in the fire pit with them fighting good mm -hmm. can you maybe describe the process because you're writing your own music yes and what is this process for you like i don't know, you even write lyrics yes in it mm -hmm. uh, where does the inspiration come from and the main source is always has to be my life it has to be my time i have to document the sound of, of my time just like all the jazz greats or all the Latin greats or pop greats, whatever you want to call them, they were playing the music of their time or discovering the music of their time. And I, I refuse to be a copyist. I just, I prefer to continue and be an evolutionist. Uh, so the inspiration is not hard to find. Just look around, just read a newspaper, just live. Look at what's happening in the world. There's more than enough reasons to make art right now, especially in the, in the situation the world is in. And, um, yeah, let's talk about the situation the world is in. How do you see art mm -hmm. coming in? How can art help even in business work? Not because there is a lot happening there too. Yes. Um, I have a big issue with the concept that art should be for free. If a person, if a plumber or a chef goes to work and this is, this is his love, this is his passion and he's feeding his family with this passion, you know, and he comes, he drives, he, he does an installation for you uh, and helps you to have water in your house. Um, and a musician is sacrificing so much, so much time, energy and money to produce a creative work or a painter or a dancer what a dancer does with their body what they do to themselves and then somebody just expects okay i'll just click it on an internet and download it for free and uh, they, that's completely for me disrespectful uh, this money for an artist helps him to do more cds helps him to feed his family it helps him to have a financial stability to continue tours you know uh, it's a very expensive uh, thing to to bring a band on tour so the status of art the status of art in general is it's flooded because of the, the internet it's maybe too much available and there is no there is no different I say different differentiation yeah, differentiation differentiation of um, what what is the real uh, difference uh, between some guy just playing very very basic things amateur things to a professional you see both of them are available now on the same playing field and uh, it's like in a in a, in a in a, in a big game from Champions League, I'm a big fan of soccer, and you would not put Lionel Messi, you know, in the same, you know, team with, with an absolute beginner, you know. 
there's a difference. Now they, they can learn from each other, they can be inspired from each other, they can grow together, but uh, there's a point where he needs a certain level to present what he needs to present. And the beginners, they need the inspiration. So the art right now, if, the, if there is no way of separating what is what anymore, then obviously the value is going to be lost. And if you lose the value, you lose the respect. And if you don't respect and value the arts, then a lot of musicians that should be getting financial help are not getting it. And these are people that really need to have that support. These are sensitive people. They need support. So the state of the arts for me, it's sweet and sour. There's wonderful things that have happened wonderful evolutions in every level and at the same time I've never seen art being that disrespected so it's too extreme for me right now what would you say it's the solution maybe hmm? you already sense it the solution education. education 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 and again understanding mm -hmm. it's about understanding if if I mean look at all the generation of kids with that with the electronic devices and, and they have a thousand songs on their devices. They don't value that song. They don't have no idea what went behind to get that song out there. Mm. It's about understanding and education again. Those three things, love, patience, understanding, that's everything. Okay. And you're also a teacher. You also teach children mm -hmm. and um, you're in the faculty or university mm -hmm. in the music here. Uh, what is the difference for you between teaching, giving classes, mm -hmm. and playing? You know, well, two things. Uh, two things. I was in the I was in the faculty of mm -hmm. the of the university, and I'm still teaching master classes in all over the world in all the major universities. Mm -hmm. and it's an honor, of course, but at the same time, it's it's a contradiction because I'm I'm a self-taught musician, teaching people music, <laughs> and how can you teach somebody, for example, jazz or 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 Latin jazz. How can you teach somebody a music with a structure of a university where when this music was created without the university? This is a very, very philosophical dilemma. Uh, and the reason why I focus on, on younger audiences, it's not because I have to, I don't need to, I don't have to do that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm well off with my concerts and my music. It's not, that's not the problem. Uh, the thing is, this is a privilege, the life that I have, and I can't just take, I have to give it back. What am I going to do with this experience and information and all of this, just hold it for myself and then one day it's gone. I'm not going to be on this planet forever. So I have to give it further, I have to give it to somebody else. So why, so it just makes sense to me, it makes sense to me that, you know, action, reaction. You know the balance of things, and some some people might criticize an artist that, uh, that that might be famous for teaching. They might think, "Oh, he's just doing it for money, or he's doing it for this." And they completely miss the point. This is this is about a duty again. Mm -hmm. So that explains that you are also the ambassador for music education and integration. <laughs> Uh, can you share just a little bit more on this and what is the integration part uh, means uh, actually? There, there's a, there's, a, there's a, a big issue in, in, in some European countries, not all of them, uh, or maybe all of them, I don't know, I don't live in all of them, um, mm -hmm. that uh, they, they tend to look at anything that is, that is foreign as a threat. And I am extremely humbled and honored that the President of Austria asked me to speak with all the young students, visit the classes and talk to them what's it like for a foreigner to come to Austria, learn German, learn the culture and be able to mix yourself into the culture where you are enriching it mm -hmm. and then together then bringing that message internationally like I do. So that's, that's basically what happened and, and it's very important that we as artists, see, we're not, we're not, we're not politicians. We're not also the common person. I've always 
felt that the artist was in between. Here you have the society, the artists, and the politicians. And we were always the middle person in between all of them, criticizing what's happening in the world or showing what's happening in the world in a way that, that both sides would have a dialogue with each other. Mm -hmm. So you think this is the main contribution of music that yes. can bring to the society? Every, or, every, yeah. every true artist is an ambassador. Mm -hmm. You've also said, which I really love, the instruments are the body and the strings are the soul. Mm -hmm. Who or what is the musician? <laughs> <laughs> just like, just like my, my instrument is a tool, my soul is a tool from the universe. See, it's, it's a constant transformation of energy. The, the soul that is in this body is touching a wood that was transformed from a tree into a melodic instrument, which is also touching metal and minerals that are vibrating on that wood, mm. which then going out of a magnetic amplifier, which was also built by the hands of another person. You see, I'm, all these energies, all these people, the universe put that person to build that amplifier for me just as much as the bass. So it's my duty to play that bass. So the strings are the soul, the instrument is the body, the messenger is the musician. Mm. Okay, you have a great message to share. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening. <laughs> if you're listening, yes. What do you think is uh, on the world? Now you mentioned listening, but really, um, from what I hear from you, mm -hmm. you really have this deeper connection with life mm -hmm. and uh, you listen to it. Do you think people in the majority in the world mm -hmm. are listening to this connection with their life too? Or I saw this, I saw this once and I found it fascinating that the word listen and silent is just changing one letter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, or two letters. So, uh, yeah, I think, that, I think that says it all. Yeah. Listen, listen. See what you hear. Mm. Okay. Um, maybe hmm, you've collaborated with the big names already in the music industry. Mm -hmm. Even with, I don't know, Al Jaro, Christina Aguilera, I think. <laughs> yeah. uh, Elton John and many other famous names in, from jazz music also. What was your favorite mm -hmm. collaboration? My favorite collaboration? Or any interesting story to share from? No, it's, it's hard to say what's your favorite collaboration because everyone has a different lesson. Everyone, some are lessons in patience, <laughs> some are lessons in love, some are lessons in understanding. Um, if, you, if you know how to, how to walk out of any situation, uh, finding the lesson in it, and it's hard to say what's your favorite. Mm. Um, I will say that uh, one of the most beautiful things that ever that that touched me deeply that ever happened to me was um, uh, flying into Turkey, in a country where where uh, I mean, what is what is a Colombian doing in Turkey? And I was asked by by the, the great uh, the Mir the Mirkan and Serta Berena to compose uh, an album together. Mm. And Somebody like Serta Berener, who is who's like Madonna, I mean, this is not a joke, it, one of the most wonderful voices I ever heard in my life, um, extremely famous. Uh, when she walks on the street, if there would be a piece of glass on the floor, the men put their jackets on the floor. I mean, for, just to give you an example, I saw that with my own eyes. But the most impacting thing was arriving in her uh, private home, and she says, welcome, Snow Owl. And she asked me, what would I like to eat? And she cooked for me. Mm. And that, that, that was yeah, pretty breathtaking for somebody who we think, you know, again, this whole great thing and you put all these things in. Oh, nice. Very, very human, very wonderful person. Mm. Nice story. Mm -hmm. And, but maybe, you have maybe still any wishes who would you like to collaborate with still mm -hmm. that you haven't yet? And since you're coming from, you know, you have Latin genes, 
maybe with any Latin <laughs> superstar like, I know, Ricky Martin. <laughs> Uh, the the thing is this for me uh, the more the more that I have evolved and and the more that my music is evolving and, and everything that I'm learning the the wish to collaborate uh, with with a, a name or a famous person or that I, it, it's not it's not that interesting for me anymore because there is there is there is such a, a unique world happening inside of, of what, what, what is coming out of, of the universe through me, that uh, I don't see the place for, for them. I don't see that. I see, I see the place where I can be a reflection for them, just like they're a reflection for me. And I respect what they do, and hopefully they respect what I do. But I don't, I don't see the need. A lot of people have often said to me, ah, oh, you should invite this famous musician in this famous musician, I, I, I don't want to do that. I don't know who these people are. Mm -hmm. I need to know who they are as people, not just because they can do an instrument good, that they can play virtuos. I don't, doesn't interest me. It interests me, who are they as human beings? Do they, do they understand the duty of the universe? Do they understand what it means to carry light and shine it? And if, and if they're not able to do that, it doesn't. It doesn't interest me because it's it's a kind of poison and and uh, how do you say handicap to what I am doing. You know, everybody has to be on the same page. And from the people that you feel that are on the same page with you, mm -hmm. do you have any role model? Like not putting it on the pedestal, but mm -hmm. like feeling that you, I would like to I don't know meet that person and do something with him mm -hmm. or her because. Of being on the same page, any role model here? Listen, for me, a role model, it's, it's, uh, I mean, a perfect example is finishing a concert in the south of France at, you know, one or two in the morning, and then I had to drive through Switzerland uh, right after the concert. And there was, you know, workers, you know, it was not the easiest climate, not the easiest conditions that are taking care of the road and the tunnels and, and they're maintaining all of that and they're preparing all of that so that I can go to my next concert or to my next destination. So anybody who is helping me, my message, my art, to get from point A to point B in whatever way, those are my role models. I think if more people would um, act like this, we would have a better world already, <laughs> really. Okay, um, maybe just to wrap it up, um, how do you see, you, you achieved a lot already in many ways, in a, inner growth and I, in I outer. Like many things, I have achieved nothing. Um, I am nothing. Why do you say, where does your path still lead? Do you hmm? sense what path is calling your name? There is only, there is only one road for me now, and that is the blue road. The Blue Road. Can you explain? <laughs> <laughs> I think the people who who okay. who, who will uh, who know what that is okay. will will they they understand what I just said. Okay. Yes, and I think that the people who don't know very soon they will they will get this message. Mm, thank you. Maybe um, the message that we, still that you feel you would like to share now with mm -hmm. the, the with the people. Um, there's, there's, only, there's only one message and one true powerful force and that is love, love and, love and light and if you do this in everything that you, that you do, it doesn't matter if it's the simplest thing, if it's making a coffee for somebody, if you do it with love, this person is drinking coffee with love and then carrying that in their body, if it's whatever it is that you're doing, uh, love what you do and respect and understand that even if somebody is not on the same road that you're on, it doesn't mean it's the wrong road. It's their road. And I think that applies to everything in life and we criticize each other too much. We judge each other too much. And it's time that we help each other 
more and we love each other more. Thank you so much. It, um, it's a beautiful message and I really um, would in invite you all to take it in and to, to just be with it, with this message that Juan just shared and try to feel your inner light and shine it out because it's time and we came here to, to be who we are and we are love. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for this interview. Thank you, Andrea. And um, I wish you, today it's actually the International Jazz Day. Yes. We didn't spoke about this, I can mention still, because yes, you're sure. having the concert today. Yes, in a couple of hours. In a couple of hours. That's right. And I know it's going to be a beautiful concert. <laughs> 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 and you're actually writing the history in, here in Austria, because it's the first time that... It's the, never happened before in the Styrian Alps, yes. Yes. And you're also the messenger for the... <laughs> For the music and the jazz here. So the music is the messenger. The music is the messenger. So thank you for doing this. Thank you for inspiring the world. My pleasure. And uh, wish you good luck. Thank you. And all the best. And shine on. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you all for watching. And um, as we said, be love, shine love. And please be inspired by the music. <laughs> thank you and bye bye.